Hello everyone, I am Aratra Kabhomik and I welcome you all to another episode of Quotes Today on Live Law where we update you about all the important legal developments that took place across the country today. We will begin with developments from the Supreme Court and then cover High Courts and other lower courts. If you like our content, please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. The Supreme Court today asked the special NIA court to decide on framing charges in the Bhime Koragao case within a period of three months. The court also directed the NIA court to decide the discharge applications filed by the accused in the case simultaneously. A bench comprising Justice Yuyu Lalit and Justice Ravinder Bhatt passed the direction while considering a petition filed by accused Vernon Gonsalves seeking bail in the case. The bench also directed the National Investigation Agency, that is the NIA, to take steps to segregate the trial of activist Gonsalves from other accused persons who are absconding in the Bhima Koragao case. The Federation of Medical and Sales Representatives Association of India informed the Supreme Court today that the Central Board for Direct Taxes have accused the pharma company manufacturing Dolo tablets, a fever-reducing drug, of distributing rupees 1000 crore worth freebies to doctors for prescribing dosage of 650 mg. Senior advocate Sanjay Parekh, appearing on behalf of the association, informed a bench comprising Justices D.Y. Chandrachur and A.S. Bopana that the market price of Dolo up to 500 mg is regulated. However, the dosage beyond 500 mg can be priced at the will of the manufacturer. In order to ensure higher profits, the freebies were distributed amongst doctors to prescribe a dosage of 650 mg. Concerned about the gravity of the issue, Justice D.Y. Chandrachur remarked and I quote, What you are saying is not music to my ears. This is exactly what I had when I had COVID. This is a serious issue. The Supreme Court today ordered status quo with respect to the Delhi High Court's order which placed the affairs of Indian Olympic Association under a committee of administrators constituted by the High Court. A bench comprising Chief Justice of India N.V. Ramana and Justice C.T. Ravikumar passed the order on an urgent mentioning made by the Indian Olympic Association. The bench was informed that the Committee of Administrators is yet to take over the Indian Olympic Association. In this backdrop, the bench passed the status quo order and listed the case for further hearing next Monday. The Solicitor General of India, Tushar Mehta, appearing on behalf of the central government stated that it was a sensitive national matter and that the appointment of the Committee of Administrators could be seen as an outside interference and thus could lead to the suspension of the Indian Olympic Association. He cited the example of suspension of the All India Football Federation by the FIFA. The Supreme Court of India has imposed a cost of Rs 1 lakh on the Union Government for incorrectly mentioning the name of a coal mining company in the list of the illegal coal block allotments made in the Colgate scam. The court noted that the petitioner company, BLA Industries Private Limited, had applied through the legal route following the procedure under the Mines and Mineral Development and Regulation Act 1957 and that it was granted the mining lease by the state of Madhya Pradesh after the approval of the central government on May 21st, 1998. In this backdrop, the bench comprising CGI and V. Ramana, Justices Krishna Murari and Hima Kohli held that the centre should not have included the petitioner's name in the list of errant allottees. The Supreme Court today dismissed a plea seeking directions to the Election Commission of India to freeze the AIDMK's two-leaf symbol. The matter was listed before the bench of Chief Justice of India N. V. Ramana Justice Hima Kohli and Justice C.T. Ravikumar. The CGI, while stating that the petition was a waste of time, dismissed the same. The Supreme Court today heard the plea of airline company Spicejet Limited challenging the winding order passed by the Madras High Court today. The airline company stated that it had reached a settlement with the creditor and agreed to withdraw the special leave petition filed against the Madras High Court's winding up order. 
The matter was listed before the bench of Chief Justice of India and Miramana, Justice Hima Kohli and Justice C.T. Ravikumar. The Supreme Court has set aside a judgment of the Madhya Pradesh High Court which discharged a rape accused on the ground of delay in the registration of the first information report which is the FIR. The bench comprising Justices T.Y. Chandrachur and J.B. Pardiwala observed that the High Court judgment is perverse and utterly incomprehensible. BJP leader Syed Shahnawaz Hussain has moved the Supreme Court against yesterday's Delhi High Court order directing the registration of an FIR against him in an alleged 2018 rape case. The matter was mentioned for urgent hearing before the bench of Chief Justice of India and V. Ramana, Justice Hima Kohli and Justice C.T. Ravikumar. Advocate Mohit Paul, appearing on behalf of Hussain, argued that if an FIR was registered against him, the petition would become infructuous. Further, it was submitted that Hussain had a 30-year-long career in politics and a registration of an FIR would destroy his reputation. CJI Ramana agreed to list the matter for further hearing next week. The Supreme Court has observed that a check bounce complaint filed before the expiry of 15 days from the date of receipt of notice by the drawer of the check is not maintainable. The bench comprising Justices D.Y. Chandrachur and A.S. Bopana noted that this issue is no longer res integra as it has already been settled by a three judges bench in the case of Yogendra Pratap Singh vs. Savitri Pandey. The Supreme Court today directed the Secretary, District Legal Services Authority, Kasar Gaur, Kerala, to visit the medical and healthcare facilities at various levels, including district hospitals, general hospitals, community healthcare centres, primary healthcare centres assigned for the treatment of endosulfan victims in the district and submit a status report within six weeks. The Apex Court was of the opinion that the exercise would enable it to have an objective assessment of medical and healthcare facilities provided to the victims of endosulfan. In the plea challenging the exclusion of NCLT members from the 8th Schedule of the Finance Act 2017, Tribunal, Appellate Tribunal and other authorities, qualifications, experience and other conditions of service of members rules 2020 and the subsequent Tribunals, Reforms, Rationalization and Conditions of Services Ordinance 2021 and the benefits occurring thereunder, Additional Solicitor General K.M. Nataraj apprised the Supreme Court today that the Union Government is coordinating with the concerned department that is the law and finance in this regard. Appearing before a bench comprising Justices D.Y. Chandrachur and E.S. Bopana, the ASG assured that the issue would be sorted out within a period of two weeks or else the union government would file a counter affidavit in this matter. This will create a lot of complications, the Supreme Court of India orally remarked today while considering petitions filed by lawyer Ashwini Upadhyay and BJP leader Kapil Mishra seeking a uniform compensation code for victims of wrongful prosecution. A division bench of Justices Yuyu Lalit and Ravindra Bhatt said that if guidelines in this aspect are framed, then trial courts will then be bound by it. It's essentially adding a layer to the criminal process, the bench added. A sessions court in Kerala recently denied bail to a YouTuber who allegedly insulted a woman belonging to the scheduled tribe through an interview published on social media on the ground that he had intentionally telecast the video to humiliate the woman. Sessions judge Honey and Vargas dismissed the bail application observing that enlarging him on bail at this stage would send a wrong message to the society, particularly since he had reiterated his stand against the woman despite having been denied bail by the High Court. Recently, a woman employee working under journalist T.P. Nandakumar at his online channel had accused him of verbally abusing her and forcing her to make a morphed video of a lady minister. Nandakumar was arrested and released on bail last month. The plea filed by a woman seeking to stop her friend from travelling to Europe for youth in Asia was withdrawn from the Delhi High Court today. The petitioner had approached the court to prevent grant of immigration clearance to her male friend 
who was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. Justice Yashwan Verma was apprised by Advocate Subhash Chandran that he had instructions to withdraw the petition after the woman got to know that her friend was deeply traumatized by filing of the case. As the plea was dismissed as withdrawn, the court directed the registry to take steps for masking the details of the friend from judicial records. The Bombay High Court has expressed strong displeasure over an advocate's conduct of trying to get alterations in a judicial order through the court staff. Its conduct is unbecoming and we express our grave displeasure at this attempt to change a judicial order pronounced in open court and to do so without a hearing in court and without notice to the other side, the court said, after the private secretary who had taken dictation in court informed the petitioner's advocate and requested to make certain alterations in the order. The court directed its registry to issue, if thought fit, appropriate instructions to all staff about entertaining requests from advocates and litigants. The Delhi High Court today disposed of an appeal filed by the Central Consumer Protection Authority against a single judge order which had stated its guidelines prohibiting hotels and restaurants from levying service charges on bills. A division bench comprising Chief Justice Satish Chandra Sharma and Justice Subramaniam Prasad granted liberty to the CCPA to file its response before the single judge in the pleas filed by Federation of Hotels and Restaurant Associations of India and National Restaurant Association of India. Jail Shiv Sena MP Sanjay Rod today pleaded not guilty in a defamation case filed by BJP leader Kirit Somaya's wife Medha Somaya. Roth is imprisoned in a money laundering case being investigated by the Enforcement Directorate and was produced before a Mumbai court through video conference. Metropolitan Magistrate Mokashi directed prison officials to produce Roth at 12pm following a request by advocate Vivekanand Gupta representing Somaya. The matter has now been adjourned for further hearing to September 19th. The Delhi High Court, while taking into account the economic background and the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic of a student, directed CBSC to declare his result of Class 10, despite the fact that he had failed to remit fee to the school. Justice Sanjeev Naruna acknowledged that under ordinary circumstances, attendance criteria must be met as precondition for appearing in the examinations. However, he noted that COVID-19 pandemic had affected several families who lost their sources of income and plunged them into poverty and that this had affected the education of children. A public interest litigation has been moved before the Delhi High Court challenging a notification that allows Sikh passengers to carry kirpans while on board any domestic flight in the country. Issuing notice on the plea, a division bench comprising Chief Justice Satish Chandra Sharma and Justice Subramaniam Prasad today sought response from the centre through Ministry of Civil Aviation, Ministry of Home Affairs, Director General of Civil Aviation and Director General Bureau of Civil Aviation Security. Thank you. Keep watching Quotes today on Live Law for more such updates.